we are from the Lee Kong Chen Natural History Museum. Join us on a journey to Pulau Satumu, the charming southernmost island of Singapore. This is the Raffles Lighthouse, the second oldest of the five lighthouses maintained by the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. The lighthouse was built in 1855 using granite from Pulau Ubin's quarries. It was named after Sir Stanford Raffles to commemorate his founding of modern Singapore. The lantern of the 29 meter tall granite tower flashes three times every 20 seconds, ensuring the safe passage of ships along the Singapore Strait. Its light could be seen by ships as far as 20 nautical miles or around 37 kilometers away. The lighthouse is unmistakably an iconic feature of Pulau Satumu, but what is less known about the island is the remarkable marine biodiversity present at its shores. Pulau Satumu is one of the richest shores we can find in Singapore, made up of two major distinct habitats. The rocky shore habitat and the coral reef habitat. Pulau Satumu is generally not accessible to the public, but our researchers are here today as part of a collaborative research project between the LKC NHM and MPA to survey the marine biodiversity here. The museum is a repository of biodiversity in the region and the data and specimens collected are important in understanding the biology of organisms and helps researchers to monitor the health of the island's habitats. This is a sponge crab. It carries a piece of living sponge over its back. The crab uses its last two pairs of legs for carrying the sponge and two other pairs for walking. Sponge crabs are scavengers, meaning they feed on dead plants and animals. This is a giant reef worm, also known as the bobbit worm. It usually stays hidden under soft sand with just its five antennae peeking out. When a prey is detected, the worm strikes with great speed to grab its target with its razor-sharp mouthparts. When well illuminated, you can see the stunning iridescence on the reef worm's body segments, a feature seemingly at odds with its gruesome looking mouthparts and bristly tufts extending from each of their body segments. This is YC, our museum officer who conducts research work on insects. He has found a marine spider, a creature that usually hides among coral rubble or rocks during high tides and emerge during the low tides to hunt. YC has even found the nest of the spider in an unexpected place, inside a piece of plastic cup wedged between the rocks. He explains that the nests of reef spiders are quite a rare find since they are often built within the holes present in corals and rocks. During the high tide, marine spiders seal themselves up within corals and rocks using waterproof silk. That's Seongkyet, our curator of molas, which refers to a large group of soft-bodied animals including snails, clams, nudibranchs, and even the octopus. Seongkyet and his team have recorded approximately 140 species of molas at Pulau Satumu over past visits to the island. The specimens collected are carefully sorted at our museum and kept in ethanol filled jars to preserve them. One of the Mola's team's all-favourite find is the foul clam, which is capable of using the strong muscles at the margin of its shell valves to clap rapidly and swim in short bursts, just like scallops. The pink tentacles of foul clams beat rhythmically with the water to help in swimming, but these tentacles tend to break off easily, making them rather delicate creatures. This eye-catching inhabitant of coral reefs is known as the red egg crab, named after its red oval-shaped carapace. The crab's bright coloration is a telltale sign that it is a poisonous creature. The potent toxins exist in the flesh of the crab and are not destroyed by cooking. 
on top of its distinctive red carapace, an adult red egg crab is easily identifiable by the tiny white spots scattered around its carapace, as well as its large, black-tipped pincers. The red egg crab is slow-moving most of the time and mainly feeds on algae. The tides are receding fast and it's a little crowded here as this family of clownfish is stranded in a small pool of water besides its exposed anemone home. Anemones protect their clownfish inhabitants from potential predators using their stinging cells. In return, these iconic fishes preen their anemone hosts, removing parasites and dead tissues. This is Hyok Hui, our curator of ichthyology, the branch of zoology that focuses on fishes. At Pulau Satumu, he has surveyed a wide diversity of fishes, some of which are not commonly sighted in our waters. He explains that the dense coral here at the island forms a complex three-dimensional matrix that have become vital hiding spots for fishes and other marine organisms. Some fishes, such as those in the Gobi family, have species that look very similar, so upon closer identification back at the museum, he manages to find rare fish species from time to time. Pulau Satumu is furthest south from the main island of Singapore. The reefs at the island are regarded to be the least disturbed in Singapore with great water visibility and flow. While many of us may not have heard of Pulau Satumu, this tiny island is one of our strongholds of local and regional marine biodiversity. The reefs at Pulau Satumu are still thriving and many stakeholders have continued to marvel at the incredible marine life there and champion for the island's marine conservation. Thank you for joining us on this virtual journey to Pulau Satumu.